Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today I wanted to do a kind of housekeeping video a uh, kind of uh, fleet tour video I wanted to talk a little bit about my own ships thought processes behind why I chose them and uh, share with you guys uh, what I might be looking at expanding in my fleet I really like videos like this because I like to kind of see why other people chose the ships that they chose and kind of pick their brain what they want to do in game what gameplay loops they enjoy because it always offers some interesting perspective right of how you've been playing the game how other people have been playing the game and kind of what ships you're like most drawn to so yeah today we're going to go over my own personal fleet which I think should be a lot of fun and I want to hear from you guys. What kind of suggestions do you guys, uh, what suggestions might you have? Uh, what do you think I should change, upgrade, swap out? I'm very excited about certain ships for IE. Uh, so I'm, I want to share with you guys what ships I'm interested in getting, as well as ships that uh, might be leaving my fleet. Uh, and... I also want to talk a little bit about some of my favorite ships that I've actually flown this year. So we're going to get into all of that in today's video. First, I want to say thank you to everybody who have been supporting the videos, who have been supporting the channel. This channel has grown so much over the last couple of weeks. It's crazy. Um, the subscriber count has almost doubled uh, in the last month. And it's all thanks to you guys. The support that you've been giving this channel it means the world to me. Uh, because I enjoy doing this. I enjoy talking about the game. Uh, I enjoy making YouTube videos as well. Uh, the discussions and conversation I have with you guys. I mean, you guys have probably noticed it at this point. I am in the comment section. Replying just about everybody. So, yeah, leave a comment. Uh, I will uh, get back to you, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, without further ado, let's get right into this video. So, I've kind of divided everything up into a few different categories here. So... On this side, we have uh, the ships that I have used the most this year in 2023. These are my top ships of 2023, the ships that I enjoyed using the most this year. Then we have the, the concept ships. These are ships that I own that are not currently flyable. It is sad because I'm very excited about all of these ships, all our side ships. I don't know what's going on, but... It, just lately, I'm just a big fan of RSI, I guess. Then we have the loner ships. These are ships that I don't own. These are ships that uh, CIG has given me because these ships aren't out yet. Then last, we have the regular ships in my hangar. These are ships that are in my hangar that are currently flyable. So we're going to start from left to right, and I'm going to just talk about everything. So for my top trading ship i'm gonna have to pick the c2 this ship i have used the most out of any trading and or cargo ship this ship has been this ship has gotten probably hundreds of hours of game time doing tons of cargo runs uh it's an excellent ship and my kind of goal moving forward is to either get this ship back or put it as one of those ships I plan to get in game and that that's probably going to be another category here and let's just kind of once we go through that once we go through all of these ships I'm going to make a new category over here of the kind of gameplay ships that I want to work towards ships that I want to get in game ships that I do not want to buy with real money because I want to grind for those ships in game so that's going to be the last category here uh, but back into this yet, C2 is an amazing ship. Uh, tons of hours flying around this ship. Next was the Corsair. I was kind of surprised by this ship. Uh, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I know the Corsair has uh, been really... It has been in development for a really long time. A lot of people have wanted it for a really long time. And... Uh, uh, just right up until its launch, there were, you know, a lot of excitement about this ship finally being added to game. And uh, a lot of people love this ship. And uh, I, 
I I liked it. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was a cool shit, but I've never been a a big Drake fan. I love Drake ships. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I've always been kind of drawn to I don't know something. Uh, I don't know in between Drake and uh, Origin. I, I like kind of the Crusader design. Uh, I mean, what you're seeing here doesn't really. Uh, you know, translate to that, <laughs> but the Corsair has a lot to like about it, okay? All the entrance and exits, uh, you know, the flight characteristics, the the firepower, its versatility, it's a good ship. Then the Vanguard Harbinger, I've used this ship a lot as well. This is a, a loner ship, you can see it kind of here. Um, for the uh for the polaris uh i've been flying a lot in pyro i've been doing a lot of um pve content with the harbinger because there's a lot of shields and the thing is with pve content is that uh the npcs can sometimes be indestructible i've ran into that situation multiple times where you know i've just been shooting the npcs and they just don't explode the shields are down their hull is completely red and they're still flying back at me i don't know what it is it's a bug um also you get a lot of npcs that just they just try to ram you um and you need a ship with a lot of shields and a lot of hull hp to kind of survive that <laughs> um yeah it's also got a lot of shields it it's kind of the most survivable PVE ship. Um, whether you know you're a really good PVE fighter, I'm not really that great at dog fighting. I'm not you know an ace pilot or anything like that. So uh, to be successful with the PVE content, don't even get me started on PVP. I don't do that. Uh, but yeah, the Vanguard Harbinger has been my go-to. Uh, you know, it's a it's a great money maker with the PVE bounty missions. Then. The Vulture, uh, another ship that I really wasn't expecting to, you know, fall in love with. Uh, I've been a big fan of mining and the Prospector. The Prospector has been my go-to industrial ship. You'll see right now, it's not even up here. Um, in years past, the Prospector would be like the main ship on, uh, you know, in these categories. But, you know, it's not on the list in 2023 because I really didn't use it that much in 2023. Um... And I ended up uh, ended up getting rid of it. So the Vulture has been, you know, at the end of last year, when we really started to get into that gameplay, uh, you know, I fell in love with Salvage. It was the, you know, kind of chill gameplay loop that I really liked. And I know a lot of people didn't like the fact that you had to get out of your, she out of your seat. I actually really liked the fact that you had to get out of your seat because it kind of gave you the ability to walk around and move around in your ship. It was more dynamic than just sitting there and pointing the laser at the rock. You also had the ability to move your ship around the ships that you were salvaging because in rock mining, you're just putting the energy into the rock. So you don't need to move the prospector around the rocks that you're mining. With the vulture, you have to move the ship around to get in all the nooks and crannies to make sure that you scrape the entire hull of the ship that you're salvaging. So when that gameplay came online, it was a lot more dynamic than uh, mining in the Prospector for me personally. So I really enjoyed it. And then, you know, we got the ability to, you know, find cargo boxes on the ships that you salvage in the missions. And, they're, uh, you know, they added all these salvage missions to the game. It was just a much more fleshed out gameplay loop than i was expecting and uh, again you know it, it, this ship really wasn't on my radar salvage was one of those mechanics that's been pushed down the road so many times i was i had no expectations for the gameplay at that point i was just like okay you know next year salvage next year salvage next year salvage um but we finally got salvage and it's great so you know love the vulture i've used this a ton in 2023 Next one is the Avenger Titan. Honestly, I'll be honest with you guys, I've never been a big fan of the Avenger Titan. It is the penguin of Star Citizen. I'm not a huge fan of the more, you know, this. I, I do like sleek designs, you know, I like Origin sometimes, the 600i, I love that ship. But 
I don't know, something originally, I just thought it looked too much like a space shuttle. Uh, I didn't drive with it too much. But then I started using it. Uh, I got it as a loner when I had the Nautilus. Don't have the Nautilus anymore. I upgraded that to the Polaris this year. Um, but I had used the Avenger a ton when I had the Nautilus. Uh, and the Avenger was a loner for that. So uh, I fell in love with the Avenger. It has the ability to uh, exit from the canopy and exit from the back. So it's one of the smallest ships with two entrance and exits. It also has that ejection seat. You can fit a decent sized vehicle inside of it. Good cargo. Uh, it's pretty good at combat as well. I've done a couple of PVE bounty missions in the Titan. It's a very capable combat ship, surprisingly enough. Um, so yeah, uh, you put a couple of skins on this ship and it's actually pretty good looking too. There were a couple of uh, skins that came out that I thought looked pretty good on the Avenger. Um, and uh, appearance wise, the looks of it, it really grew on me uh i wasn't expecting that but i think it looks like a cool little ship again it still looks like a space shuttle like a like a mini space shuttle in the star citizen that's kind of part of its charm it is star citizen's penguin uh next is the cutter the cutter is another great runabout ship i found myself uh gravitating towards the cutter a lot of times if you know i want to use a larger ship and I didn't want to wait for the insurance timer. I was like, okay, I'll just take the cutter, run over there, do what I got to do, and then claim it at wherever I'm going or, you know, something along those lines. Uh, but the cutter easily became a go-to ship for just running about the star system because it has a lot of fuel and it, it has a good interior. You can fit stuff inside of it if you're doing box missions. Um, so even if, you know, you have a big fleet and a lot of ships, the Cutter is still one of those ships that I think, you know, you it's good to have in your fleet. Next is the Fury LX. Uh, I originally got the regular Fury, but I kind of figured that I wouldn't use that that much because it, you know, doesn't have a, a quantum drive. And um, I'm not a really big combat player, so it's not really like I can really, you know, uh, skill into that ship but then the lx came out as well as all this arena commander stuff and honestly ever since that happened i've just been non-stop in arena commander trying to increase my times and i've went from like a two like this is my genuine time around the snake pit in the 100i before the um you know uh, I, I started flying with the LX. In the 100i, on Snake Pit, my best time was two minutes, okay? <laughs> now, my best time in the Fury LX on the Snake Pit is one minute and 19 seconds. So, a huge, improve, huge improvement, okay? I almost cut that time in half with the Fury LX and a little bit of practice. I'm going to keep flying the Fury LX. It's a great racing ship. It is very fun to fly uh, for Arena Commander. It's basically the only thing I use now. Um, trying different tracks, trying different lines. It is very responsive and it's forgiving. You know, you, you can still, you know, screw up big time in the Fury LX, but I feel like, you know, if you know what you're doing, if you know where to point the ship, you can swing it around a little bit easier. And that's why CIG kind of talked about a little bit. They gave it a little bit more acceleration strafing. So it's a very good handling ship. And then the STV. This is a great ship. Uh, for a while there, there was uh, a lot of dupes going on with um, um, FPS uh, stuff. And uh, yeah, obviously I used the STV for that <laughs> as well. Uh, but the STV is a great ground vehicle. Uh, you really can't go wrong with it. It doesn't have, um, you know, it's not enclosed if you're going on in, in certain environments, but it can fit just about anywhere. It's very fast and responsive. The handling is good. It's a good looking vehicle. It has storage. Um, you can't go wrong with it. I, I ended up using it a lot every single time I wanted to drive around on a planet. I took the STV. So that's going to be my top vehicles these are the ships that i have used the most 
in 2023. Uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below, what were your top ships of 2023? What ships did you use the most intentionally, unintentionally, ships that you just found yourself gravitating to just be like oh i'm just gonna take this one and uh what ships have you put the most seat time in i think this that's a pretty interesting question topic to kind of go over i like to hear what you guys think and then obviously so i said before that uh i had nautilus for the longest time and the nautilus is a very cool ship very exciting ship it to this day is my favorite looking ship in the game the way that thing looks is amazing i love it um but it's one of the ships i think i might end up getting in game in the end now with the polaris um i do want to in the future not now but in the future possibly get into some org gameplay i'm thinking about starting an org doing stuff for the channel here so I honestly just bought the Nautilus because I thought it looked cool. I had no real intention of doing all gameplay or anything like that. It was one of those things that, you know, when CRG sold it back then, I mean, it was just people were buying big ships because they were cool. Uh, we really didn't look at them as, oh, you had to have 23 players to, to man this thing, you know. A lot of us all the backers, we saw the Javelin and were like, yeah, I want a Javelin, so they bought it. It wasn't, the, the thought process behind is like, how I'm going to use this ship, what CIG, you know, how are they going to balance it, all this stuff. It wasn't really a question. CIG also said, hey, you can man this thing with NPCs. So we're like, okay, we'll just man it with NPCs, we'll, we'll buy it, and it'll just be like, you know, Elite Dangerous or something like that. It doesn't really look like that's going to be the case. Now, we are still going to be able to man these larger ships with NPCs. And it's one of those things that I do want to try. Uh, uh, so I definitely want to have a larger ship so I can do a little bit of both. If I want to, in the future, do some org stuff for the channel, or if I want to test out having NPC crews, I think that might be interesting content, you know, NPC crew uh, management content on the channel, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, it has that hangar so you can transport ships for star systems like Pyro. Um, so ultimately, I'm like, if I want to do, you know, a bunch of stuff in Pyro, it's good to have that kind of ship carrier um i didn't really want the liberator because it's completely exposed i did want to have something that has a hanger date night jump is too flashy um and i originally thought about the odyssey as well but i ended up going with the polaris because of the torpedoes um again you have a lot of turrets that'll be interesting with the npc crew the cargo capacity is kind of relatively the same um yeah, I, and I just thought it was a very cool ship. It kind of kept in the RSI theme that I'm kind of going for now. So I ended up going with the Polaris. But the RSI was a close second. Then we got the Galaxy here. Reason why I picked this up, bar and none, is because of the modules. The modules that come with this ship are, are like... No other ship can really compete with it right now. You've got medical, you've got cargo, you've got refinery, and now you're getting base building. So... For me, I'm going to use this ship for primarily cargo and base building. Um, the idea is that it is going to replace the C2. Right now, of course, uh, I have the Carrick as a loaner for it. So I'm using the Carrick as my primary uh, cargo running vehicle, which isn't super ideal. But I do really love the Carrick. Like, you really can't complain. It's like when you buy a Galaxy, you get a, a Carrick at half price. So... There's just so much reason to pick up a Galaxy right now. <laughs> like, this is, uh, I believe, three hundred fifty dollars. Like, uh, I, I mean, you can't go wrong, and you get it, and you get a Carrick as a loner. So I've been doing cargo running with the Carrick, um, and uh, the Galaxy when it comes out, you know, it's gonna have that base building module. CIG says they're already working on base building, so I do want to build a little base on a planet. Because again, I want to try to test out all those gameplay loops and I really don't want to swing the money for a Pioneer. I definitely don't want to swing the money for a Pioneer. So we're going with Galaxy. <laughs> and then, of course, the Zeus Mark II CL. You know, big fan of the Zeus. That video blew up. That was a lot of fun to make. Uh, this is a very cool ship. I'm very excited about it. I ended up getting the CL because I wanted kind of like a daily cargo runner. With Galaxy, it's going to be kind of like the multi-purpose main cargo runner. Um, but it's a big ship. 
that's going to be for big cargo running jobs um some probably not going to do solo you know um might you know bring npc with me again this is long term kind of kind of stuff because i i fully intend to keep these ships in the fleet for a while and to me the cl is kind of that freelancer max uh ship that i really wanted but you know has better styling looks this is a very cool looking ship um of course uh, an option is always the taurus i uh, I used to own a Taurus way back in the day. My first two ships was an Aurora and a Taurus. Um, and back then we had the Andromeda as a loner. And I flew that a lot. But the Constellation ships, I just don't like how they fly. Um, I'm hoping the CL flies better. Um, it looks like it's a little bit more aerodynamic. Um, I do love the Constellation. I mean, honestly... Uh, <sighs> It, the constellation is one of my favorite ships in the game it is such a cool ship there's a lot of nostalgia with the constellation series because again it was my it, it was one of my first two ships when i when i got star and i got an Aurora and a constellation i guess i've always been our side man what am i saying and then uh the loners of course you know we've got the calc alona for the galaxy the hammerhead and the harbinger alona for the polaris and the a1 alona for the cl I really don't have a lot of intention of using the A1 for anything uh, specifically, but it's a cool ship because uh, I like the Spirit series. Um, of course, the Harbinger, I've been using that for PvE content. The Hammerhead, I don't really use it, but it flies really well. Like the, the one thing that blew me away, because I've had the Hammerhead for a while because of Nautilus, the one thing that really blew me away with the first time I flew a hammerhead was just how well it maneuvers. Like it, like when you're rolling, it can come to a stop so fast. Like uh, if you've never flown a hammerhead before, you'd be just surprised how maneuverable it is. And it makes sense because it's designed to combat fighters, medium fighters, light fighters. Uh, so it needs to be maneuverable. It needs to be able to roll uh efficiently to kind of get those turrets in position to kind of pick off those light fighters so the hammer has a really cool ship and uh honestly I've, if i had a use for it i would buy it but i just don't really have a use for it uh i also really like the interior the interior is awesome uh i love the ages kind of style and design um the captain's quarters you know the the cargo slash engineering area this is a very cool ship uh, I really love it and you know eventually you know the Polaris is supposed to come out maybe late next year um, early 2025 I don't know uh, I'm not in too much of a hurry because I, I have been enjoying the hammerhead when I do use it and uh, yeah the Carrick I've been using that uh, for cargo it has a cool interior as well um, there's a lot of you know hallways and different things you have to walk to with a cab but it's it, this is a ship that a lot of people love i don't really have any specific attachment to the cab specifically um but it's not a bad ship like uh like i don't have a problem with it i do enjoy the interior uh I, captain's core is cool um it just seems like kind of more um I don't know. Uh, it, it's one of those things that we're kind of still waiting for exploration and what exploration gameplay is going to be. So, uh, I outside of a, a cargo runner, I haven't been really using it for anything else. It is a cool ship. It's a good looking ship. It does have that hangar. Uh, so, you know, you can land a, a small ship. Uh, you know, I you know played around landing the Fury in there. That's been a lot of fun taxiing the Fury around. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just kind of like a mess about ship and a cargo ship. Then we go to ships that I own in my hangar that, um, yeah, these are currently flyable. 600 I Explore. Whenever I'm in the mood for screenshot citizen, the 600 I is the ship I take. <laughs> That's just about it. It is a cool ship. Uh, it's luxury. I wanted it, so I got it. So there, there's, there's really not that much science behind uh the existence of this ship in my fleet it's just there because i think it's cool uh spirit c1 
surprisingly enough, I did not get rid of this ship when I got the, the Zeus uh, CL. Um, contrary to popular belief, I know I kind of bashed the ship a little bit in that Zeus video, but I do really like the way it looks. It is a very cool looking ship, uh, and it's pretty fun to fly, and I've been messing about with it. You can fit a ton of stuff in the cargo area, ground vehicles, whatever. Uh, to me, I think it's going to be a pretty good daily. Again, I'm getting the Zeus CL to do cargo basically this is going to be my daily cargo ship and the galaxy is going to be my multi-purpose large cargo ship uh for certain things like uh doing you know hauling drugs or something smaller maybe i want something a little bit faster more maneuverable i don't know how CIG are going to balance things you know you know moving forward with components and all this that and the other so i'm like you know what i i like the way the c1 looks i'm gonna keep it for now we don't know if it's going to stay in the fleet, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Then the Vulture, of course, you know, the Vulture is one of my most used ships of 2023. That's not really going anywhere. Then the Aurora LN. So this is a pretty interesting story. So like I said, uh, my first two ships was an Aurora and a um, Constellation Taurus with, you know, the Andromeda as a loner. I still have that Aurora. The Aurora package is my Squadron 42 package. So I've never really touched this ship. This is basically... Now, I can upgrade it. Uh, you know, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. And I might actually do that. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. So yeah, the Aurora LN, I've had it for ages. It is my, uh, my, it is my game package and my Squadron 42 download package ship. Uh, and I do not use it at all whatsoever <laughs> i have a couple of interesting skins for it uh like pirate skin this distinguished uee skin a couple of other you know convention skins for the aurora um again uh, it would be cool to use those skins on this ship but again i just really don't use it then of course the fury lx racing arena commander uh, i sometimes i'll come home from work and i'll just hop in arena commander and race around for a couple hours this ship's not going anywhere. And then the STV, um, I don't really have that much of an attachment to the STV because it's just so cheap in game. Um, it's, I think it's like $12,000. This sh this ship's definitely not staying in the fleet uh, or ground fleet. It's definitely not staying in the fleet. It can, you know, easily be replaced. And then what isn't up here is uh, the PTV. PTV. I guess we can add that. Uh, the PTV is not purchased ship uh i got this ship it, it ptvs of a full bonus thing um so yeah uh it, it's not really upgradable though so it's just you know on my account now one of the things that uh i'm considering is the the sulin so we saw a lot of uh, updates about the sulin uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, yeah, it looks to be a starter cargo ship, um, kind of uh, that transforming vertical to uh, horizontal flight mechanic, uh, three stories, you have kind of like a entrance suit locker elevator that goes all the way through to the cockpit, you have a bedroom, bathroom, and the cargo is on the outside, kind of like the railing, which makes sense. The boat attack ships. Looks like it's going to be very maneuverable. Looks like it's going to have two size one shields and uh, three size three guns. Which, if three size three guns with that maneuverability and those shields, and uh, it's also looking like it's going to have six SC of cargo. With six SC of cargo, that might be an interesting little drug runner. Um, I'm interested in a little drug runner like that. Maneuverable, can get in and get out of situations pretty quick, has good firepower to defend itself. Um, the shields aren't crazy, but two size ones are not bad. It is more than a lot of the other starter ships. Size comparison wise, people have showed it next to the cutter not being that large. Again, because of that vertical orientation, uh, when you landed, versus when you're in flight again because of gravity generators and all that kind of stuff 
I, I listen. I have no idea how the the transformation and landing is gonna go of that ship, but it's pretty interesting. Now, I'm considering upgrading the Aurora to the Sulin, depending on how much money the Sulin comes in at. People are kind of speculating that it might be in that sixty seventy dollar range, and you know the Aurora is like forty bucks, so that's like you add an extra thirty. I don't have a problem with that. Um. And the next thing is the uh, the RSI Arasta. Um Again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know who comes up with these names. <laughs> they do sound cool though. Um, so what is kind of on the chopping block for that is probably going to be the C1. Um, again, right now I have the A1 as a loner. I really don't want to do it, but it really depends I might just get the CCU um, uh, and hold on to that. I, I don't think I'm, I'm I don't think I'm gonna uh, apply the apply, it, but I might get a CCU from the C1 to the Arasa, depending on how expensive it is. But again, if it's a lot of people are speculating, it's gonna be like uh, around five hundred dollars. Um, again, that's kind of pricey. But maybe there might be some kind of war. Again, this is all new money. I'm not, you know, doing any store credit stuff. Uh, this IE, so there might be a war bond uh, type situation. If there is a, if I could get a war bond CCU from C1 to the Rastra, that might be kind of an interesting play. That's something that I'm considering. Um, there really aren't any other ships that I would kind of slot in that position. Again, I want to really hold on to the Galaxy and the CL. Um, yeah. Those are kind of really mainly the only two ships I'm looking at. I'm not really all that interested in the SRV towing gameplay stuff. That's kind of cool, but not really my thing. Um, the Tumble Storm that is also now on PTU. That's kind of an interesting ground vehicle for me. Any ground vehicle over fifty bucks is a buying game. That's just kind of my rule uh, when it comes to this stuff. Again, you know, Star Citizen is in development game. You know, you don't you don't have you you don't have to spend any money on this game. I just want you guys to know that right now up front. It is just kind. Of, it is a voluntary thing you want to do to help support the development of this game. So I kind of set rules from the outset of, you know, the reasons why I kind of want to do stuff, uh, it, it, it's especially with my account and my fleet. And I just kind of put the rule out there. Any ground vehicle over 50 bucks is a no. <laughs> uh, it's a buying game. You can buy all these, these things in game. And eventually I want to steer my fleet towards my like forever fleet. I, to, to the point where I'm not spending any more money on ships. I know we all say that, you know, this is going to be the last time, you guys. <laughs> and then, you know, CRG releases another ship that we want. And we have we figure out a way to make it happen. So, uh, the this situation with all side Rasta, that it, it, it might be one of those situations where I'm going to have to pick it up. Pick one up. Or a, a CCU for one. Uh, but yeah, the Sulin, uh, I think I'm going to lock that in. Uh, I think I'm going to upgrade the Aurora LN to Sulin. That looks like a pretty interesting ship. A ship, uh, I mean, very least make content about it. Uh, it, it yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm already not using the Aurora LN, so this is kind of like a win-win, in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. What ships are you very excited about? Oh, yes. I can't believe I even forgot about this. The the other ship that I am uh, very excited about is the uh, Endeavor. I think I'm going to try to pick up a CCU t for the Endeavor as well. Because again, you hold on to that CCU, you lock in that price. Right now it's three something. That's not bad. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I might I might get a CCU for the Endeavor. Maybe maybe from the C1 as well. The C1 is probably going to be that... Uh, that, uh, that that CCU main hull ship that I just, uh, you know, pick up other CCUs for. And then as they come out, I'll, I'll, it'll give me time to make that final decision. But yeah, I don't want to take up too much more of you guys' time. This video has ran pretty long. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. 
these types of discussions are super fascinating to me uh i would love to know what kind of you know ships you have in your fleet what you're looking at picking up uh the reason why you have those ships uh this conversation seems just like a ton of fun to me so yeah let me know what is your favorite ships let me know uh what are your favorite ships of 2023 what ships are currently in your fleet what ships do you want to pick up this ie I would love to hear from you guys in comments down below. Thanks again for the support on the videos. You guys have been amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, more videos on the way. Lots more videos. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for me here today, you guys. And like I said, at the end of all these videos, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Salute.